So Alaska is the most powerful emblem. And this is one of the things that gave me joy during the TED Talk is like people who want to see it rolled out in real life. It's like, hey, we have like, uh, you know, a real Senate uh, and congressional race to show you. And I uh, like it played out in this way. Yeah, well, you do. But you also I think there, there's a st- there's one step further with that state. And, and that is what ranked choice voting enabled with the the state legislature. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So totally. you, you have you have you know the House and Senate in Alaska. It is Republican controlled and the most, the largest and most powerful caucus is the bipartisan caucus. It's a mix of Republicans and Democrats and they have come together and, um, you know, and we heard last night actually um, from one of the key leads of, of that state talking about this. It really has incentivized Alaska's state leaders to come together. They don't agree on the issues. But they agree on areas where they have common interests that they can make progress on. And that has really driven a very drama-free, productive legislative session for Alaska. It's government working. It's democracy working. And that's what we need to see in states clear across the country. Now, these reforms, what they do is they they free you from uh, being under the thumb of the party, whatever the heck that means, because you're like, wait a minute, as long as most of my people are into something, (laughs) I could run, uh, you know, I can uh, run again and win. So I don't need to worry about the party boss as much, Uh, you know, and, and I have a sense that that's probably what most Americans would like to see is like a legislator or uh, executive that has uh, the back of the people, really. Um, and, and the problem is that right now the the system is filtering most of that electoral power, not to us, the people, um, but it's filtering it to whoever can tilt one party's nomination process or the other. Yeah, I mean, you've spoken about this beautifully, Andrew, in terms of, you know, we want, we want to elect problem solvers. We yeah. want to elect leaders. And then what happens to those leaders once they get elected? When they're trying to solve problems, they actually, their job is undermined because they could get primaried if yeah. they're actually going to, to do the work that we expect them to do for the progress that we all want to see. Uh, and I think that's just, that's a very powerful point. You know, most Americans that I, I talk with as well, there is this perception that people who are elected into office, well, they got in with a majority, right? No. No. They they really don't. <laughs> uh, and and I think that that's very important. That as well as you may want to you may want to support and you might have a um a, a candidate that you're supporting who is a problem solver, but because the entire system is set up to disincentivize leadership in problem solving unless you are you're you know addressing the issues of that narrow more partisan base, you're not able to get anything done. And that's why that that ROI, if you're going to be investing, please invest in reforming the election system so that in order to win and keep your job, you're beholding to your constituents and not to, let's say, a, a more partisan party interest that is telling you what you can and cannot vote for. Amen. You know, uh, I told a story the other day to, to someone. Um, I uh, was with a U.S. senator a few years ago speaking to a young audience and a young person raised their hand and said, hey, what can I do to make a difference? And then the senator said something that made me wince internally at the mm-hmm. time. He said, vote. And I, I heard that. And for some reason, uh, it just seemed so hollow. Um, and I like people voting. I think young people voting is great. I think, uh, you know, like you should do that. Um, but to use this presidential election as an example, your votes will not matter at all unless you happen to live in one of the six swing states that it might might genuinely be contested. The rest of it, like irrelevant. Ninety percent of these congressional races, uh, your race is probably um, already decided, <laughs> you know, before um, you know before anything has happened, uh, honestly. And so, if you go to a young person and say, "Hey, if you vote, everything is going to be better. Your problems going to be solved," like the young person actually doesn't believe it anymore. And you know what? They're probably right. <laughs> you know, you know if, if they went and like showed up like diligently and voted for the person they thought was best every time, problems are probably not going to get solved. Like, un- unfortunately, right now we're at a point where, um, like, to me, the, the genuine answer to this is like, look, we need to fix the electoral system so uh, our leaders are actually more accountable and responsive to us. And you can have different uh, candidates and parties 
enter the mix, rise and fall, have different ideas, have a more dynamic uh, and open system. And then if you show up and vote, then you can expect results. But right now, if you leave this system as is, if someone pats you on the head and says, hey, if you vote, like your problems are going to be solved. Like, you know, uh, I think most people now realize that's not actually true. And, and the truest thing we can tell people is really to wake them up to the message of fair vote and the rest of the folks in the reform movement. It's like, look, if we want results, we have to have the right underlying incentives. And ranked choice voting will make it so that, believe it or not, a majority of, our, of people have to be for a person them to win. Uh, because like you just said, Meredith, right now is just not the case. So for as long as, as you and I have been sort of working professionals, right, we have, we have witnessed this increasing polarization and the increasing dysfunction that has got us to where we are. So these are not new problems. Uh, but I think, you know, the reason why so many of us as Americans feel disaffected, feel disconnected from our own country is because we're not doing the work yeah. that we that we typically are known for and that we that we typically do. We're not doing the work of of government and we're not and innovating. We're not modernizing our own machine. We're like just letting ourselves get ground up by this increasingly dysfunctional and corrupt machine, and yeah. then wondering why the heck it's not working. Yeah. And, and and the thing I love about uh, you, Meredith, and Fairvote's work is like out of the eighty percent of fed up. Americans who, frankly, just throw their hands up and complain or check out. It's like you want to raise your hand and be like, hey, if you're fed up, um, this is the way to fix it. Like we're over here actually being uh, innovative and constructive and productive and doing the work. So come on in. Uh, and that's what I would invite people to join you in, join the movement in, join forward in, join fair vote in uh, and the rest of us, because this is really the way out. Uh, and it's the only way out, in my opinion, that doesn't involve some very, very uh, historically nasty and even violent and tumultuous times. Yeah, and, and whatever happens in November 2024, Fair Vote is going to be focused on continuing to win. And so I, th I think one thing that I, I would want to, to share with your listeners, Andrew, is just the word agency. Agency. Yeah. And for those, those jurisdictions where – if you're in a, a, a city or a state where you've got ranked choice voting, your vote counts and it matters and you have a responsive government. And I want you to share that story out. I need you to share with your fellow Americans what that feels like when you are, are, are part of that building of your community, of your state, and the rebuilding of our country from the ground up. The problem is not going to be solved from the top down. As Not always, at this point, that's for sure. Uh, no, for sure. And our, our, <laughs> our country's history, we have had a long history of election reform and democracy reform. Uh, so just look at the amendments of, of uh, to the to the Constitution on this as well. This is part of our American tradition. Yep. If the system is not working, if the government is not working, then it's our job to fix it. And so this is where that agency comes in. Um, and we want you to be coming in with us and with the Ford Party. Um, please reach me uh, on our website, LinkedIn, anywhere you can find me. I want to hear from you. Uh, and we're, we're welcoming all supporters who are focused on getting at the, the systems tweak yep. um, that is simple. It's pragmatic. It is easily adopted across any jurisdiction here in our country. And it's just exciting to see this reform take off at this, this acute time for our democratic republic. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Please do hit like and subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified every time a new episode drops. Thank you.